Hello, I'm Annabel Brady-Smith, Communications Director of the Association of Investment Companies. Social impact investing allows investors to target positive social outcomes as well as a financial return. It can range from delivering accommodation for the homeless, providing investment to charities and social enterprises, and offering support to vulnerable groups. To discuss how investment companies can invest with positive social impact, I'm joined by three managers. Jeremy Rogers, Portfolio Manager at Schroeder BSC Social Impact Trust and CIO of Big Society Capital. Paul Bridge, CEO of Civitas Social Housing. And Kenneth McKenzie, Investment Manager at Target Healthcare REIT. Great. Let's get on to the questions and I'm going to start with Paul. Paul, how does your strategy help society and how do you measure this? Well, good afternoon, Annabelle. Thanks very much for inviting me um, to this video. I'm Civitas Social Housing PLC, invest in social housing across the United Kingdom, providing quality homes for people who have the highest vulnerabilities in society. So we're talking about working age people who have learning disabilities, mental health issues, suffering from autism and other uh, care needs, including physical disabilities. And traditionally, people with these needs were housed in large scale institutions, which have proven grossly inappropriate for their social needs. So the portfolio that we've now invested in, which is around a billion in size and houses four and a half thousand people, provides homes in the community for people with those lifelong needs. Thanks, Paul. Jeremy, how does your strategy help society and how do you measure it? Thanks, Annabelle. Um, so, so we target investments benefiting specifically more disadvantaged groups, tackling issues such as homelessness, domestic abuse, children on the edge of care. We invest in three asset classes, high impact housing, debt for social enterprises and social outcomes contract. And the common characteristic, I guess, is investable solutions that, that, that tackle those challenges. In terms of measurement, uh, impact management is really central to our approach. We consider impact at, at every stage of our process. We measure impact using the impact management, management project dimensions of who, what, how much contribution and risk. And the focus for us really is that who, who is the, who is the group benefiting, but also the contribution. How is this, you know, what is the additional benefit here versus, versus the status quo? Other important parts of measurement for us is, is use of user voice data. This gives us a, a good understanding of whether impact and well-being more generally is being delivered. And in some of the areas we deliver in such a social outcomes contract, the financial returns are directly linked to the measurable outcomes that are being achieved in areas such as health and social care and employment. Right. So really helping some of the more vulnerable people of society. That's what I've gained from both of you so far. Kenneth, how, do you, uh, how does your strategy help society and how do you measure it? Well, of course, a society changes, Annabelle. And... Uh, if you go back 50 or 70 years, we used to look after our grandpas and nannies and all the rest. And today, both, both members of uh, the typical modern family are probably out working. So who looks after the over 85 year olds? Uh, we do. Um, especially in the last 18 months of their lives and uh, a great society. It cares for its seniors and honors its seniors. So that's how our strategy helps society. We provide great facilities for our seniors. And how do we measure that? Happy families, relational families. They love our nannies and grandpas. Um, we also measure it with uh, some pretty useful websites like carehome.co.uk measures happiness and contentment. We measure it by personal visits where we see what's happening and uh, understand the, the local areas. We measure it with some target teen learning tools. We measure it with uh, fabulous facilities with great bedrooms. We measure it actually also with viability of the underlying asset. Uh, does it have a regular visit attendance uh, and lots of occupancy? So lots of good measures also. Lots of good measures. I think I want to go and live in one of your care homes, Kenneth. Come. <laughs> right. Next question. How does the investment company structure help you for this type of investing? And I'm going to ask that question to Kenneth. 
we're in a very long term business. Uh, we're only at the start of the growth of the really good modern purpose built care home because of the baby boomer. It's the folks born in the post war in the late 40s, 50s and 60s that double the number of elderly care people needs uh, in the next 20 years. So um, the structure is superb for us because it's long term permanent capital. Uh, and we can be upfront and honest with our investors that it's lower return, but it's a long return. We have 29 years of income for us. So it's really a, a, a great model for us. We just love it. it it's, it's, we're not somebody to earn quick money in the next year, but if you want long money for the next 25 years, come and invest in us. Yeah, and it sounds like long income, very attractive and doing exactly. great work too. Uh, Jeremy, how does the investment company structure help you in your type of investing? Uh, thanks, Annabelle. So, so Big Society Capital has been investing in UK private markets, high impact opportunities since 2012. But, but the majority of our investments to date have been in private markets alongside pension funds, um, endowments, insurance companies, institutions of different different types. It's therefore been more difficult for, for many investors to access these opportunities. So, so we've been really excited to launch the Social Impact Trust for Schroders to enable some of that access. Uh, some of the other ways that, that, that it helps, um, uh, some of the funds that we involve in can have sporadic opening type and they can have high investment sizes, they can have um, li liquidity challenges. So it really breaks down a lot of those barriers and makes it as easy as possible for people to invest. What we also do is we bring together all the investments that, 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 that we've made um, with, with transparency in terms of being able to see through into the underlying investment. So that really creates that connection that we've heard positive things from, from people to investments into their local area. Thanks so much, Jeremy. And Paul, how does the investment company structure help you for your type of investing? Yes, the closed end structure is absolutely vital for the type of investments that we're making. We're housing people for life. They could be 25 years old and they're moving into the property and their life expectancy might be as good as yours or mine in the 70s. So they will often need a property for 50 years or, or longer. We want to buy assets and hold them because we want to provide long-term homes for the most vulnerable people in society. And for investors, what we want to provide is that long-term year in, year out, safe, you know, steady income, reasonable return, but obviously matching their other obligations if they're pension funds or if they're individuals. So it's very much a structure that works very well um, for this type of social impact investing. Absolutely. It's that long-term, close-ended structure, which is so suitable for these types of long-term investments when managers can take a totally long-term view and then never fall sellers. Very, very appropriate. Jeremy, I'd like to ask you, what are the risks to your strategy and how do you go about mitigating them? So, so we specifically target areas with, with a high weighting of government revenue. Um, they have been traditionally re resilient through economic, different economic environments. We've certainly seen that, I guess, over the last 18 months, but, but clearly some risks come, come with that. And one of them is around, is around policy risk. So there's a few different things we do across our portfolio to, to, to manage that. Firstly, we focus on areas that are a priority across the political spectrum. As you mentioned, Annabelle, these are long-term structures. So, so this is a portfolio that can work through different uh, through different political scenario scenarios. We also have a diversification of different policies across, across the investments that we make. But perhaps the, the, the greatest mitigant for us is we really focus on those areas which can deliver those significant savings versus the status quo, um, which has traditionally, again, provided some policy resilience. Yeah, so good mitigation strategy. Paul, what are risks to your strategy and how do you mitigate them? It's all about due diligence and a granular attention to detail, because clearly the demand uh, that we have, which is exceptional for social housing, um, one could think that one could simply buy a property almost anywhere and let it appropriately. But actually what's absolutely critical is that each and every property has local authority support, commissioner support, that the rents are set at the right level at the beginning, so that because obviously they are indexed, so if they're set at the right level at the start, they prove value for money through the life of the lease. Location is everything. 
you can look at a shiny new building and think that looks wonderful. But actually, if it's not near community facilities, near transport facilities, it's not going to serve the needs of young people who want to enjoy community and society as much as any of us do. And that's the whole intention. We've rejected more properties than we've bought over the life of the five years. Primarily the reasons for rejecting properties are location, over-renting. These will be bought by others, and it doesn't mean they're not good properties in some cases, but they're not appropriate for a fund that's saying we want to be the absolute bellwether for quality and for price, protecting the public purse as we measure in our social impact surveys with the good economy and the social public calculator that demonstrate that the portfolio delivers nearly £70 million a year of savings to the taxpayer. And the reason it's able to do that is because obviously um, living in institutions is more expensive, but also the rent levels are an appropriate level uh, when we set them. So it's all about granular attention to detail um, as a manager, making sure we understand what the local conditions are and what the local care providers and local authorities need. Thanks so much, Paul. I'm really interested. It's location, location, location again, actually, for social housing, just like any other type of property. Very interesting. Kenneth, what are the risks for your strategy and how do you mitigate them? Well, the pandemic uh, type situation was always a risk identified in our prospectus. In fact, our tenants came through it remarkably well and the quality of the real estate and the quality of the operators resulted in only 3% of the beds uh, actually being impacted uh, and having infections. Competing with buyers who don't understand the risk is actually a risk for us uh, and they take on unsustainable rents. That'll come back to bite them and we'll be here to pick up the assets uh, in time to come. Right. And never and and never touch and never trust the government completely. I've trusted the government for income in past businesses and they let me down. So we have a significant element of private pay because there's a couple of trillion in net worth in the over 65s. There's a vast amount of wealth in the housing stock. Uh, and for the one in seven people who needs care in private homes, uh, that's a sweet spot for us. Good to hear. You never trust the government when it comes to money, Kenneth. Very Sorry. Wise. Yeah, they Very take money wise. off me all the time. <laughs> okay, final question. What do you enjoy most about managing your investment company? I'm going to ask that to Kenneth. What do you enjoy most, Kenneth? When my first wife was dying, this is my fifth business. And she said, and whatever you do, carry on working in that business. It's the only one that's really worthwhile that you've ever done in your life. So here I am seven or eight years later, still working, caring for people, loving people, providing great facilities for our seniors who have done so much for our society. We live off the fruits of the faithfulness of a past generation. How more honor, what more honorable task can there be than to look after these people well? Meeting people from Bletchley Park living in our homes, meeting, meeting former cabinet ministers living in our homes, meeting street cleaners living in our homes, meeting nurses and doctors and caring for them well. Is that worthy, Annabel? It sounds wonderful to me, Kenneth. Quite honestly, I want to go and do your job right now. Very it's satisfying. fabulous. And, and Very have satisfying. Bun- and have a bunch of people in the business who just love the mission. We just love it. Really, really great to hear that, Kenneth. Paul, what do you enjoy most about your job by doing the investment company? I think personally, I, I came from the social housing sector, and so I've always wanted to house as many people as possible in the best possible circumstances. And the privilege of being able to work with number of investors to bring really very substantial amounts of institutional capital into a space where there's enormous demand and then see that delivered on the ground. So when you go and meet our residents, you meet Vicky, she's 33 years old, she's a real person, she's in hospital for 12 years, she'd never been able to have candles on her own birthday cake until she was 32 and when you speak to her now, she's crying with joy that she can celebrate in that way. Mark, who I met recently, he hadn't spoken for 10 years, 
in a hospital setting. Three weeks after he moved into a community home, he was starting gradually to speak again. And there are thousands of individual stories. The elderly lady was 85, whose son lived um, in Doncaster, and she lived in Belfast. She could only see him once every few months. And then he finally moved back to Belfast when she was in her 80s into a proper community home. There are thousands of stories like this, Annabelle, and it's very moving to be able to help, but also to give sensible returns to impact investors. And because we're big, and because we have lots of range of skills in our team, we're also able to bring other things. For example, we're now producing significant carbon reductions across the portfolio, which wouldn't be able to be achieved by smaller providers who don't have the, um, the capacity um, and the skills within their organisations to do it. And we're bringing that forward um, across the portfolio. So it's an enthralling journey. Um, it's got many, many, many challenges uh, during the during the journey, um, but we're really enjoying the journey together. That's to say, Paul, it's just incredible to hear what a difference you're making to people's lives. Must be just incredibly satisfying and fulfilling. Thank you. Uh, Jeremy, what do you enjoy most about managing your investment company and the role you play? Thanks, Annabelle. I, I think for me, it's about running a team whose job is to go out and find those investable solutions that can deliver both financial outcomes, but also make, make significant social change. Clearly, our job then is to manage those to achieve that. And that involves work, working quite closely, I guess, with a group of social entrepreneurs, where you really see the incredible things that they are, they are delivering, um, often in, in, in quite challenging circumstances. So it, it's starting, I guess, with a very broad range of different different areas, then really focusing in on those areas of high potential and making them work as best as, best as we can. Yeah, I'm sure that's very satisfying. Well, I'd like to thank our three managers very much for joining us today. It's been great to hear more about the positive impact their investment companies are having on society. I'd like to emphasize that we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Investment is for the long term and you need to have a well-balanced portfolio. If you're in any doubt, you should talk to a financial advisor. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.